everybody. Happy uh, Thursday. Uh, I'm trying Thursday. to act like I'm frozen. I guess that's the idea. That doesn't work, Eric. How does that work? That's pretty good, huh? <laughs> Are you trying to be like a ventriloquist? Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you, you know, they take the picture and it's like, and everybody's around. It's pretty cool. I thought it did pretty good. You notice the lips didn't move. Yeah, I did. I did Couldn't that. understand anything I said, but the lips were. I could understand, but they probably can't understand. <laughs> well, here we are in the backyard again. We thought temperature wasn't, you know, it's. It stayed in the 80s today, so instead of the hundreds that we've been at. Yeah. So we're here. You can also see we're not anywhere by by the Brian had fire. Thank goodness. True. Burned like uh, 30,000 plus acres. Yeah, it's like uh, 100 square miles or something. I don't know what it is. It's All like I know is they said it was the half biggest, of Utah's gone, probably. <laughs> the biggest fire in the U.S. history ever. Yeah, biggest fire ever in U.S. history. Yeah. And the currently the largest fire, of course, in the, in, in, the, the in the state, in the country. Yeah. Still burning. They haven't gotten it. They're like firefighters from like four different states working on it. Uh, it would feel terrible for the people down there. I hope none of you are <coughs> down from there or you didn't get, have to get evacuated from your home. <laughs> yeah, there was some got evacuated. We hope you made, made it out safe and you at least got like your precious yeah. belongings. We you. say good luck to those firefighters and hopefully yeah. they can keep safe. They, we do a lot. We had a neighbor kid that was a firefighter for a while. We did. And uh, and he'd do those brush fire, fires. those fires out there, forest fires. And mm -hmm. It's uh, it's hard. It's Intense. it's tough. Alrighty, so we had some uh, somebody sent me afterwards. So, so we, Tegan sent me some subjects. We wanted to do follow up questions. Yeah, follow up questions. Time. So one of them was, uh, do you have to? So the question came up. There was a confluence post. I, I got like it's a little bit sunny for me. Are you like going blind? Do you want me to get your sunglasses? I have to squint, you know, a little bit right now because it's just not dark enough. We're a little earlier. <laughs> the reason why we're coming at six. Sorry, no, we I changed the schedule from seven to six. That. Reason we did. Hold on. We got Jets practicing for the parade. a couple of uh, F-22s, uh, I think it was, that were flying by. They're practicing for their run for the 4th of July parade coming up on Tuesday. Well, and Saturday, so in two days, um, in Utah, we have like one of the biggest 4th of July celebrations yeah. called the Stadium of Fire. Uh, I affectionately call it Stadium on Fire because yeah. it really looks like it's on fire when the fireworks <laughs> show goes. Yeah, um, but they always have jets flying over. They do. Fly the over. Opening, they fly over the parade too. They do. On the Fourth of July parade. They do. So it's like an opening ceremony. They like sing the national anthem, and then they have these F-22s come right over the top of the stadium. So I'm sure they're doing their practice they might come out runs the front. Um, to get ready on, for Saturday, since we're like two days out from yeah. the stadium of fire. So there, it was just two of them instead of the normal four. Yeah, there's usually four that come. And uh, but uh, that was cool. So sorry that it was really yeah, loud. Yeah, sorry it was a little loud, so I couldn't answer the question. <laughs> we thought that they were gonna go. They came by about 15 minutes earlier, and we were like, "Oh, they're gonna pass. We'll be, we're gonna be They'll fine." Be done. And They'll then be they done. came back again. Boom! Right over the top. So. I mean, like, I was looking up, and there was the tailpipes <laughs> right there above my head. So. so the reason why we did this early tonight is because my number one son, his wife, my daughter-in-law, number one, yeah. she is pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be grandchild number, number six. six we got four we got two on the way and uh, tonight at 7 30 we're going over there to they're going to tell us that we're all going to choose what gender the what sex the child is is it male or female we'll yep. guess and things like that they're so. doing their big reveal announcement so we decided that we would move this an hour ahead so we could still talk to you and still be there for that yeah, so got to be there for that we're going to squish this into an hour tonight yeah we won't be going over because we, we got to leave <laughs> so the first question was uh, there was a post out on Get Satisfaction used uh, for feedback mm -hmm. to us about uh, having to upload the permission slip, the permission sheet from um, from somebody that when you want to do their 110 year rule, when their you want to do that, do the ordinance of somebody that's uh, within 110. And they add, and, there, and on this Get Satisfaction post, it implied that you have to upload the permission slip. Right. And that's not true. We uh, 
we recommend that you have one. Uh, so if you get permission, we recommend that you that you actually record you have permission. For instance, if they send you an email, that works. If they give you verbal permission, we recommend that you that you get them to sign a paper. That's just for your own. Uh, Prote like should, should a question insurance? come up later in the future, I didn't really get permission. Then you can then we have that. And in case they come to us saying we don't have it, then we'll ask for it if that's necessary. But yeah. we currently don't require it to be uploaded. Just uh, just uploading and just making a request is sufficient. Uh, and then giving us the information in order in case we need to verify it later. Uh, then that's it. So it's not required. So I guess satisfaction post was just a proposal from somebody, but that's not. What it's we not required. permanent. You're fine. It's not even a feature. That, right? was, uh, that was a suggestion from the community. That was it a question even. from Amy. So yeah. Amy, no, it's not legit. Um, we talked about this one last time. And we, yeah, we oh. talked. Oh, just a reminder. We talked about the... Standardized uh, places. St entering standardized places. We put on the Facebook where the you URL is. Yep. You can go in there and hit the feedback and then enter in the new place you want. A little statement and stuff. And then that's what gets to the team. They review those and then uh, add, them, add them into the database. Yep. And um, the next one was, when will they be able to see combined totals of indexing efforts <coughs> on family search? Don't have a date for you. That's it's actually done by another team. Uh, they are going to do it. They did tell us, and they said it would be sometime this year. But that's all so I know. So they got about six months. Yeah, that's all I know. They were they're planning on doing it this year. Okay. Um, we were talking a little bit about autofilling for indexing. Autofilling for indexing. I pass that on to the uh, to the guy. I haven't got anything back yet. I still, I still recall myself as I start typing, things start to fill in. Uh, you can use, like, I know it's control B. If you hit, I know if you do instructions, if you uh, help instructions on this. On, on the, the indexing site? On that, in, yeah, on the indexing thing, uh -huh. client. In the, might be about the collection or something. It'll tell you all of the keyboard control shortcuts. keyboard shortcuts to get to the next tab. And, and they made a whole lot of difference, you know, with the new one. I, it's kind of clicking on my mouse and it's kind of a pain and oh well this one doesn't really have a value to put in but they don't but they complain if you don't if you leave it alone blank. if you don't enter in anything yeah so there's like control d to make it say blank and so it won't force you to fill it in so start looking there if i get anything from them i'll let you know okay um we had a suggestion for lines are sometimes hard to follow on descendancy view, and they were wondering if it was possible to add some colors to distinguish. Yeah, I've functions. passed that on. I don't know. We're still evaluating. I don't know if colors helps. I think sometimes if we did the color bars, it would just uh, be, distracting. be distracting for the icons on the side and stuff. So we have to look and Maybe see. We'd have to look. Works. Maybe lines or something. I don't know. I don't know if we have a good thing there. Okay, and then the last one that we have from last week was... If they click from IGI to a record, are they able to see ordinances? Yeah, and the answer is no. We don't. If you go to an IGI record, that means it's inside of the IGI collection, or it's you know an IGI. Uh, one of these records are just records, so they could be birth records or or censuses or death records. They're usually vital records. They could be in multiple collections, so they're probably in the birth collections, but it's also an IGI collection because they were used for extraction. And we don't show any ordinances over in the collection. The look browsing collections and looking at collections and of stuff, we don't show any ordinances there. So that's not where to see them. You can't see them there. Yeah. So we, the, the ordinances are in the tree. The records are over in collections and records, and they're just separate. Tell Cody. Hey, Cody! Cody, they're coming back! Shh. Hurry up! Here comes the app. There they go again. <laughs> Remember, if we miss a question, we'll pick up there next, next time. Next week, yep. Mm -hmm. So, and our next one, just to give you a heads up, is on July 6th. So, uh, next Thursday yeah. is our next one. So, 
7.30 our time, right? Yep, 7.30 Mountain Standard Time. So, okay. our first question comes from Denise. She wants to know, I'm currently an arbitrator for the Family Search Indexing Program that is downloaded. How do I arbitrate records on web indexing? You know, I don't know that. I don't know how to do that. So, I'm not an arbitrator, we'll by the out. way, so I don't know. So, put that down as one for me to go find out. Got it. And, uh, and I'll go find out that one. I, I've done some indexing on the new web-based one, but I don't know where the arbitration happens. Uh, I, I, I have an idea, but I want to go verify. Okay. So it's better to be correct than wrong, right? Yeah. Okay, so the next question is from Robert Givens. He wants to know, why can't we upload PDF versions of stories to the storyboard? Currently, PDFs have to go to documents. Um, so I'm sure some PDFs are documents, but PDFs allow us to create a story with pictures embedded in it and use different fonts that FamilySearch doesn't allow. Um, could, you, could this be considered being allowed along with Word documents for stories? Uh, all right, well, let me talk about the first one. The okay. first one is uh, the reason why <coughs> PDFs are uh, considered documents right now, and that, that's probably going to change. You know, when we, were, when we were building Memories, Memories has only been around for a couple years, and uh, it's fairly new. It was fairly new. We started out with just pictures, and then, hey, we need to upload, uh, you know, and recordings, stories. and then we need to upload, then we make, create stories, mm -hmm. and hey, we need, we got people with PDFs, so let's upload those. And most of the people that were doing PDF were wanting it to be a source or to be a, you know, I guess a document. I don't know. So the <laughs> we, we call it a document because it has a PDF form, uh, file name right on the end. It's a mm -hmm. PDF, so we say, oh, that's a document. But whether it's a document or a story or a record or something is all very arbitrary, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a docu uh, a record could be a PDF or it could be an image or or a, a story could be an image, or it could be a PDF, or it could be just text typed in. So uh, we're not there yet, but our desire is to sort of make that more arbitrary. You can say this is a story. It, it, we're thinking of just saying you upload memories, and you say this one's a story, this one's a, a record, this one's a document, this is a whatever. And, uh, but right now, when you upload it, it shows up in the documents section. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it's not a story. I guess what he's wanting is it's really a story because it's a life sketch, probably. My guess is he's probably like, for example, I'm gonna assume, but when you tell your snake story, which is infamous from the mission, I maybe one day can convince him to tell you guys because it's awesome. Um, but if I say, for example, I typed it up and I put like some of your old mission pictures yeah. in it and then I saved it, technically, I mean, yes, technically it's a document, but technically it's a story that I documented or like transcribed of yours i think that's what he's saying is like i made that i wrote this story out with right. pictures right. how do i get it into the story section right. versus well the section? uh right now you can't uh i will tell you that there's plenty of people that want to embed right now a story has one picture and it's kind of not really in the text like a blog article or anything okay so we are actually evaluating right now a, an upgrade to memories that would allow you to embed pictures inside stories oh. so, so it'd you, be like a blog post yeah it'd be kind of like that so you type okay. text you can stick a stick a image in there we probably won't have the text wrap around very good but you could stick a picture in the middle and a couple of pictures on it maybe an audio things like that we're looking at how to do that for regular stories oh, okay so you don't have to put it in a pdf you could just, just upload it copy and paste it into the thing I don't, I don't know how upload would work. We'd have to see how that would work. I guess it would be similar. You may have to have maybe. the text and then you plop pictures in there and stick them in. So, okay. But in general, the concept of memories is a memory is, could be lots of things. And so we haven't gotten there and we're not really sure how to make it arbitrary. Because mm -hmm. sometimes a PDF is a document. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a story. story. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's just a set of pictures. People sometimes just put a bunch of pictures inside of a PDF. PDF and they'll upload it. Yeah, so so that's it. The the back, stories back we're looking at the stories <laughs> to see about how to allow you to have multiple pictures embedded in the story as you're typing in stories. And I think that'll be a big improvement. Right. And that'll help. Uh, he wants to let you know too. Many of uh, them out there, I guess, appreciate what you're doing, and he appreciates it. Oh uh, well, you thank to you. Keep doing them. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I keep. I need. I need to keep understanding that this is useful because this is a lot <laughs> extra time, right? I mean, we. 
I go to work all day and then I come home and I do this for an hour and then I usually have a couple three hundred emails to do and yeah. and you know then I got it's then I got like this family thing that I got to do you know so this these families yeah <laughs> was there something else for him or is that um, it? his was just that some PDFs are documents others yeah. they want to create a story and embed it so consider it yeah yeah I think you covered that okay so yes uh. Side tangent, I'm just going to like plug right now. We don't know what day it's going to happen, but if you guys are following Family Search on Facebook, they're actually going to do a post about this page in July. Um, they're going to come tell people it's really that nice this is like that, an Thank awesome you very resource much, Family Search. and that they can come and like interact with Ron and I know I'm not as cool, but maybe I like pretty it up a little <laughs> bit. I don't know. It's better um, looking. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so if you see the post, make sure that you can like go in and comment and let people know that you appreciated it and that you like coming so that they can understand that it's not just some weird post that they're posting about, but that people actually enjoy it. So yeah, that'd be nice. That would be nice if you could do that. We don't know. If I can find out a date, I'll post in there and I'll let you guys know so that you can go over and make sure to comment. Yeah, I wonder if we need to move, like, you know, we, next time if we go outside, we'll have to move the grill so you can actually see the tree. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, Lynn wants to know, I've read that FamilySearch is discontinuing access to its microfilms after September 1st, 2017. The last day is to order August 31st. It will be another three years before microfilms are completely digitized. Why would FamilySearch discontinue access before all the microfilms are discontinued? Or digitized. If we visit the Family History Library in Salt Lake, will we have access to the microfilm? Uh, <laughs> that was a really loaded question. Want me to yeah, start no, over again? No, no, no. I get it. I okay. get it. I'm trying to think of how much I actually know and how much I believe. You know, it's, it's speculation on my part. I'm not part of this decision. However, I know that the, uh, there's only a few, very few companies that produce microfilm anymore. Hmm. It's just not a method that's commonly used anymore and uh, we still want to use it because it has a life lifespan of like a hundred years so we're interested in preservation um, <clears throat> so uh, the, part of the reason is this takes away time from the people who are digitizing to go off and make duplicate because when you order a microfilm uh, they have to go into they go into the vault. They're all in the vault, so they go to the vault. There may be excess sitting at Salt Lake Library that they can see. I guess we should mention so the vault is located in Salt Lake City, <coughs> up in the mountains. Well, it's, it's up in the mountains of Salt Lake City. It's granite, huge, <laughs> yeah, big, huge granite mountain vault. Mm -hmm. um, and so the microfilms are stored there. The microfilms are stored there because of temperature control and all that kind of stuff. There may be some extra ones in the Salt Lake City Library that they send, but. If we have a bunch of places uh, wanting a particular microfilm, and there's not enough there, then we have to make a copy of the microfilm because we never, we never leave the original. The original microfilm is never leaves the vault. The original stays there, and then a copy gets sent. The copies get sent because we don't know if it's going to get damaged or something like makes that. Sense. So uh, we do that, and so that takes time away from the digitization process. So the team that's working on digitizing yeah. have to pause digitizing and then go over and make it. Yeah, duplicate. they have to make it a duplicate and do that stuff. Yeah. It just detracts that. Also, the cost of the microfilms are skyrocketing, as you can imagine. Last I heard, there was only one manufacturer of microfilm. But there may be two, but I think there was one. Well, if they're developed similar to film, like photo film, the chemicals alone are incredibly expensive to yeah. develop it. Well, and the process takes a good chunk of time. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about microfilm to do that. I've seen it done. They have it. I've seen the rolls. I've been in. Luckily, I've been in. I You've been able to go to the. I've, vault. Been, I've had the opportunity to go to the vault once. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want to help you understand that, and it is true that they won't be finished digitizing everything for a couple more years, two or three more years. But we believe that the most um, valuable when we when we converted microfilm to digital. Mm -hmm. We took the most, what we felt was the most extensive and the most appropriate and valuable records first. Okay. So the ones the at the end are the least, which we believe are the least valuable. They have the least special information, they're least uh, requested, least maybe? informative, least requested, things like that. Um, <laughs> and But we realized that everything that has been digitized 
digitized, you can see online at a family history center. So if you go to the family history center, sit down at their computer, you can look at all of the images that you would have had you ordered that microphone. Okay. So what I can do, uh, if it's desirable, I guess I could find out. I don't know how I could find out. Do you know anybody that works on that? Well, I'm trying to figure out what I want to find out. <laughs> would I want to find out what kind of records are left? I don't know if they want to tell me that. Um, so send me another email and see if you want to know or post it on Facebook or whatever. I guess and what? Tegan can capture it and get it to me. What part you want What to is know? it? So, yes, it's happening on September 1st. Uh, yes, we won't be making any more microfilm. The reason why is for cost and efficiency and for to help speed up the process. Uh, we believe that the records at, at the end here, the last three years, are not the ones that are most desired at the moment. Um, and you'll be able to, see, and you can see all of the restricted images at a Family History Center that have been digitized. So if there's some other question that you have related to that, then post it or send me an email. You can send us an email on the Facebook group or you can send him one directly. Whatever, just so you guys know, when you send them to the Facebook group, I'm the one that responds to you. So if yeah. I don't know the answer, I will send it on to him and we'll make sure that your answers get right. answered. So. My email is ron at familysource.org. Right. So. Okay. okay, what's next? So the next question was, on the home page, I have a new recommended task. When I click on my view relationship link, it finds no relationship. So why would it recommend these? Yeah. So what, what's recently happened on the team that does that work is they're not only collecting things within what's called the scope of interest, mm -hmm. the six up, one down, or seven up, one, one down, of two the down, generation. of your generations, but they're also pulling in there all your watch list oh. and, uh, and also your history list. That's a, lot so of, that's a lot of people. So they're pulling in not only your pedigree, they're pulling in the watch list that you're watching they're also pulling in history list so it's very possible that you've gone out and helped somebody else or you saw some person and in, in the record and you jumped off to that person and you looked at that person so now they're in your history list but they're not somebody that's directly related to you right or True. in the or even in the same tree Right, because right? they could find a thing where a husband and a wife and then up and down and, and to get not to not in your like little stuff. yeah. So it's it's possible that because it does the watch list, the history list, and your scope of interest, which is the your pedigree up and down a couple, mm -hmm. that it's possible with the history list that you're you've got in there people that you're not related to. So it would give you information. Say, here's a hint about this person. Uh, there's a Go feedback button on that page. You're certainly welcome to click feedback and that team looks at that. I think there was actually a get satisfaction post today or today or yesterday about, about that, that. that same thing. So they why, am I getting, why am I getting this on my list and <laughs> I'm not even related to it? And so that team will, that team, I mean, I could pass it on. I mean, I'm assuming it's not a problem if you, you just kinda if you just kind of, or, or go no add the record or add the hint or fix it. I mean, they're just helping someone else, so. True. So true. Okay. Sorry. I was gonna pull my phone out so I know what time it is. I got I got it right here. I know you're blind and you oh, can't see, like but I can phone. see it. Okay. Okay, so um another question in regards to microfilm. Okay. But what will the changes to family search um be when we can no longer order microphones? Will there be more images available online or will it continue to be the same as what they're currently seeing? Well, as I said in the other one, mm -hmm. yes, will there be more images online? We always upload the images of any digital collection um, up, upload. That's one of the first steps we do after we digitize, we upload it into a collection. There's some processing that has to happen. They do a little auditing checks to make sure we put in a little, we put it in a, in a collection, we kind of describe the collection. So there, it takes a little bit, you know, maybe a month or so to get that all put together. I don't know the exact date. Yeah, that's not my thing I do mm -hmm. and uh, and then it gets published in as images the difference between it there's there's no difference between what you get on the microfilm and what we digitize mm -hmm. the only difference that happens is in restricted collections and those are okay. collections that we aren't allowed to post uh, online that's part of the licensing agreement we have with these people who own the records they say stuff like you can show and I think and I think Everything we have, we can show to a FamilySearch user, 
but some of them we can show online and some of them we can only show inside of a family history center. So, what so would, those images are online. So I'm curious, what are some of these restrictions, for example, that they wouldn't be able to keep it? Well, it's just the... The, the owner just doesn't want to... The owner them. says, I want to sell people on the internet, oh. make them pay money to see this images, right, for a dollar an image or something like that. Okay. And so they don't want them to be free on the family search site. Makes sense. So they say, we want to retain right to charge that, so you're not allowed to show those images to people on the internet. So the way we work that so that it works, but yet still on the internet is they're out there, but we don't expose them through the internet. You have to go to a family history center, and then we know in the family sister history center what computers are on a family in a family history center, and only those computers will ex will show those images. Gotcha. Okay. So that's the only difference, and that's the same as it is today. So there's nothing that's difference. Nothing the only really difference changed. is, as was mentioned by the fellow before, yeah. is that. They're not all not all microfilms have been digitized. So those microfilm images, those microfilms that haven't been digitized, you're not going to see. So okay. I you guess just won't be able to see them. I'll ask for. I'll be, I'll <clears> oh, I know what I need to ask. You know what you need to do is what? you need to send me an email. Remember, I need to look up. Will the the collections the the microfilms that are have not been digitized yet are they available at a family history center? In other words, are there there at the, like, does the Salt Lake Family History Library have those microfilms already? Okay. Meaning if they travel there, can they see it? Right. Or do, do can they not, do they not have the whole set? And so sense. it doesn't work. So I guess uh, I'll ask for them just because, like, I'm kind of curious now, not that I've ever looked at a microfilm, but um, <laughs> as they digitize, do they upload as they digitize or are they going to do, like, a bulk upload at the end of three years and put all of those files Oh, no, no, there? no. As soon as a roll of microfilm is processed, they automatically up, upload, uh, they upload it. it. Okay. So but the processing isn't, isn't just digitizing. No, I understand. They have to digitize it. They do one image of an entire ribbon. Roll. They do a, what's called a ribbon. So they have one ribbon. humongously landscape <laughs> image, okay. right? And right. the image is the length of the entire microfilm roll. Oh, gosh. So then they have to like go in and... And then they, the they have a... That we written special software in uh, that we invented several years ago mm -hmm. that, we vendor, that vendors use for this particular process okay. that automatically detects the dark lines between the images oh, okay. and then it chops up the images the one giant image it breaks it into a hundred image or 500 image yeah, on, the on the roll, roll. and then uh, a person sort of scans through there and sees if we cut it in the wrong you know in the middle so adjust, they scan adjust the cut. and adjust the cut a little bit and okay. they may rotate something if they see it upside down so there's a little processing there, and then that gets shipped to another person, and that person sort of looks at it, enters in all the metadata. This is a Iowa wills and whatever during these years. And then it goes to another little part that's the way pointing where they try to say, this, uh, this image number one is the intro, image number 10 is this county, image number 100 is this county, and they do a little county <laughs> markers in there. Sounds like and then when work. that's kind of done, that's why I say it takes a month or three or so, somewhere in there, uh -huh. several months, they get that all processed, then that gets put on the thing. Okay. And that's just to be helpful. Now we're we're also exploring ways to make that faster, by the way, but that's the way it works now. So, so it may take a little it bit. It may not necessarily be three whole years that you have to wait for everything. Oh, it's no. It's going to come as it It'll come uploaded. as they get processed. Okay. So it'll just, the last roll won't be done until for three, three years. Three years from now. Right. Makes sense. Okay. okay, Sylvia wants to know, she said she received an email concerning an ancestor named John Alger. She gave his um, PID if you need it. Okay. Um, it was a campaign for the early Mormon missionaries. Yes. I did attach the source to his page in Family Search, and when I went to go look at the page, I saw that I was the sixth person to yeah. add the same source to his page. Since then, there are more, per like one more person has added the same source. The campaign was sent out on June 25th. Is it possible that, um, to have a way to have the program to let additional people know that the source has already been added after the first person adds it so that it doesn't get attached over and over and over again. Yeah, I apologize for that one. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> there was a failure to communicate mm -hmm. from another team. That doesn't ever happen at work. Um, so there's another team that does campaigns 
And, you know, it's a good campaign to be able to find these uh, early Mormon missionaries and attach that record to them. Sure. And, and they worked with the church history department to add a little button to attach. But they neglected to think about it might already be attached. <laughs> and uh, we discovered this. Uh, you know, someone mentioned it to us. Uh, the emails went out Saturday at, like, midnight or something. Mm -hmm. Sunday morning, people opened their email and started clicking away. And by, you know, within an hour or two or Hungry three, food. it was like uh, people were saying, hey, something's funny here. I attached it. I go look and it has two of them. And, <laughs> and by Monday morning, you know, I heard a little bit about it. And then on Monday morning, it was a full-blown problem. <laughs> and uh, and lots of frustrations and emails thrown around. And so uh, I got involved then because now they're messing up the tree stuff. Mm -hmm. And... So we all I've know had, how you feel I've about had, the tree yeah. So I've had there. a few conversations. Uh, we've we've stopped the campaign. We won't be sending any more emails out till this is fixed. We have two proposals on how to fix it that I talked to them about today. And now we just and I think we're gonna we'll we'll do one because it's quicker. So I was unable to get with that team today, but I think I could visit with a few people. And I think the solution I'm proposing will work. And. Uh, so we'll, we're going to try to take care of it this week uh, so guess, through next week, and uh, yeah, and then when we get it done, then they'll they'll do probably another uh, another one of those campaigns. And but what it'll do is it'll my the desire I have is one of two ways. Either one, uh, we detect that it's uh, uploaded. that's uploaded, or that it's attached before we go to the family history or to the church lds.org site to show you mm -hmm. and if it is we'll remove the button there that says attach, attach it, it to your ancestor <laughs> if it um if that doesn't work then what we'll do is we believe that's i think that's the best way to do it if we can't get that done then what we'll probably do is when you click attach and send you to the source create page we're going to probably say something on there that says hey you know glad you came you know whatever sorry this source is already attached Click here to see the source that's attached, or click here to see the person. And, and Thanks let for you being a diligent family yeah. search person. So, sorry about that. That <laughs> was uh, uh, Communication a boo-boo on the group that does those. They didn't they didn't realize that that would happen and think through that. And so, you know, we all make mistakes. The software, not perfect, so we all do that. Computers so they did it, computers. and they did. It, the computer does exactly what we tell it to do. And, and it did exactly and we what did, it was supposed to do. And we didn't tell it not to do that. So, <laughs> uh, so we're going to work on that and fix that. Okay. Uh, hopefully, we'll learn. Hopefully, uh, all those involved will learn that that's a good th thing to look out for in the future. Yeah. Plan ahead. Yeah. So sorry, we're not going to go back and fix it. So meaning, if there's three of those sources on there, then I recommend that if it concerns you, then uh, re go, the go detach two of them. Yeah. Okay. So, Rob in Alaska, he wants us to know that he is currently enjoying 20 hours of daylight per day. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a guy in Alaska. I cannot believe that. I, how do you sleep, Well, Rob? I think really thick curtains. Oh, my gosh. It's I have blackout be thick curtains, curtains in my house, and I don't think I could sleep through broad, broad daylight. You, yeah, when you have 20 hours, you're pretty pooped. So, I would admit, and you got to get up, you know, in two hours to go to work. So, I suspect eventually you pass out. I don't know. Okay. Hard to say. Anyway, so he says, this time it's just a recommendation. Okay. But for color-coded temples that show the status of ordinance work being completed, how about a golden temple by the ordinances tab on the person page when someone's ordinances are all complete? The gray just seems a little too boring. <laughs> the gray? Mm -hmm. For on the, on the what page? So if all the ordinances are completed on somebody, there's a little gray temple that says, like, all their ordinances are done. So he says, why Where? make it a golden Where does one? it say that? I'm trying says, to take my head. On the ordinance, the golden temple by the ordinances tab on the person page. Oh, on the on the little little icon on the ordinance mm -hmm. tab. He says, why don't you make it gold? Because then you don't then you don't go looking at it. Gray's boring. Gray's boring. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> He'll take it back to the user experience people. We'll see what we can do. I don't know. Do we use gold? It seems like we use way too many colors for those things. You have right? no gold on your website at no, all. It's like. I feel like that's like a crime. I don't, I don't do the standard styles. That's apparent. We've talked about this. <laughs> okay, Sylvia. Okay, good to Thank you for the suggestion. Sylvia Bevan, who is on here with us, asked, can we request a specific, specific microfilm to be digitized, or do we just have to wait? 
just have to wait. You don't get to ask for a particular one. They already, they've already ordered them years ago in the order they go. And believe it or not, if you asked for one, there'd be 50 people asking for another. And so we just, we, there's a team whose job it is, is to evaluate the value of that, of that set of records on the microfilm. Genealogical value, does it have, you know, vital information, does it have other information? And that's how they prioritized it, by things that had the most relevant and useful information get done first, and the ones that have less get done later. So, unfortunately, you don't get to ask Sorry. to get things jumped in line. You have to wait. Yeah, just have to, just have patience. So, that's our last question for tonight. That was it? That was it. All right. We did in 30 minutes. That's like a, that's a Well, I didn't draw anything. Us. That's the thing. Well, that's true. The the folks that are submitting have seen enough of the drawing. They're just like gagging with a spoon. Well, or they're like, don't ask any questions that require drawings because none of us can read Ron's handwriting. Right. Yeah, no, I don't think that's it. That can't be it. <laughs> okay. So I guess we... So I got things I can, I, I'd like to talk about. Sure. Go right ahead. You got 20 minutes before we have to be done to go see if you're having a grandson or a granddaughter. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um... I don't know if we talked about this before. Did we talk about ordinance things last time? Anytime you remember? What? Like uh, shared and family. We, and talked, we talked about a family sharing group to like go do temple with together. We talked about that last time. But you didn't, you were like, it's just in the start. So you haven't, or would you be interested in this? Oh. Uh, Is there a development on that? Well, let Do me you just. care to share? Um, does they have any questions? What is, is there anything out there on the people that are on? No, I've been watching. Their, oh, there's nothing really particular. I've been watching their questions. Okay. Oh, um, I guess there's. Hold on, there's one from Debbie. She says, "Get help. New consultant planner is great. Will the other will the help others tab stay or go?" Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you think it ought to do? <laughs> I I know my personal opinion, but uh, uh, the help others. Um, there's two places. Uh, yeah, they changed it. If you noticed, they called it help others in both places. Uh, you had help others in the tree, sec the sub menu, and then you had to help others under get help. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the reason why they did that is because the teams that worked on that made an assumption that the, the help others that comes in the tree and in memories on the, on the sub menu would go away, that it would be replaced by the consultant planner. That doesn't, that doesn't work, and the reason it doesn't work is because it's, uh, I believe, it's not acceptable to have to, for you to go to the consultant planner, enter in somebody's name, all of that information, just to help them for three minutes because you happen to be in the Family History Center and somebody came in and wants to use, do the Family History Center, but they can't remember their password. And you don't care. You're not doing one-on-one -on -one find take teach for them it's just a it's just some you're running the family history center or you're helping at the family history center and they're like i can't remember my password i don't remember anything but i do remember my birthday and my helper whatever can you can i get some help and you just log in for them and let turn on and let them sit at the computer uh, another reason is there's often times when we need to when admins or need to help somebody quickly um, when the people send in support cases and things like that, they need to help people quickly in the tree. So from my perspective, the, the, the quick help others where you just click it, you help them, you enter in the username and the PIN or you use the, the name and the birth date uh, to do that it, and not have it show up on your port, control the portal, I think is still needs to stay. And there's another reason it needs to stay too, and that's because uh, we ha I've talked to you, I can't, have I talked about the light client? In foreign countries? Yeah. You talked about it briefly at Roots Tech. I don't know if we've talked about it. I can talk here. a little bit more about it. You do have like two other questions. Okay. Do you want me to so, do those first or do you want to give a quick blurb on your light? Well, I'm going to say the light client is a very, uh, it's a minimalist tree mm -hmm. for places in the world where bandwidth the internet bandwidth is really either horribly expensive or, or really really slow. slow and so we want to transmit minimum amount of information possible right. and uh, <coughs> there's no way we could put a consultant portal inside of that thing no. but yet 
people in those countries want to be helped by somebody or that or somebody in those countries needs to help them because they don't even do know it. how to use a computer or they sure. don't even know how to use anything and so we need to allow them to help it well we can't put consultant portal there so the the old standby will stay for that well if it's staying for that then i still want it in the tree so let me know if you disagree if you think that ought to go away or if it's too confusing let me know all right let's go to this question so luis Wallace wants to know, maybe you've covered this before, but do the letters in each PID mean anything in particular? Are the initial letters in a PID code for certain categories? Oh, the letters, yeah, okay. So PID, once again, stands for Person Identifier, mm -hmm. and it's the numbers and letters that are uh, hooked to a person. Some, uh, some people, interestingly enough, they call them a license plate. I never, <laughs> I always call them PID because that's what I know they are. Making notes. And I think it's usually, if I remember right, usually four four letters or numbers followed by three. And anything can be a number, anything oh, can be a, a letter. Somebody sent us one today. Oh, did they? Yeah, they said. So it's one, two, three, four letters, one number, and two letters. Yeah, it could be any combination of letters or numbers. Okay. But it's usually so it's four, four three. dash three. Okay, so explain. This it is to the us. PID. There is no significance to any of these numbers. <laughs> Absolutely none. People keep trying to make that. They keep saying stuff like, well, if it starts with KW, that must be a member of the church. No, that's not true. Uh, there may be a lot of members of the church that have a KW on it, but that doesn't mean but all KWs are that way. Uh, they also, some people also think that if they change the number, so if that, uh, that two, I change to a three, some people think if I change it to a three, I went to my next ancestor. They're trying to use it like a RIN. Oh. A RIN number is record identifier number that's used in uh, record managers like Ancestor Quest or PATH had it or um, Legacy, all these ones there. They all have RINs and people try to make this look like look be a RIN. <laughs> Saying if I just change the number, so if I go KWCF6G33, that's me. If I go 34, that's my wife. If I go 35, that's my mom. But that's bull. No. There's no, has nothing to do with it. Okay. So this has no meaning. All it is, is we, we create a number for every person in the tree. And the number is this long. Right? It's like uh, it can go up to the quadrillions right yeah. so that we never run out of numbers well and there's billions of people yeah so. and you wouldn't like one zero 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 fifty times you know twenty <laughs> times three seven four eight two as the pit yeah, so instead we said we're gonna encode that through software we're gonna convert that into into this format kind of code. so we just take the big old long number we apply a computer algorithm to say, make, it into this. make that into characters so that it's unique. So that when you type in these set of characters, we can r run reverse the algorithm and come out with a giant number. Because that's, <laughs> we really, it, inside the database, it's all just giant numbers. Well, everything is just one zero. Yeah, that's true. So there's no meaning to the PID. Stop the, Sorry to disappoint if you. people say that there is, tell them they're wrong. Stop the rumors. Yeah, they're going to say, well, I do it. I look here, it's a KW. See, it's a KW, and here's not a member, and it's not a KW. Yeah, that may be true, but that's not true oh, everywhere. Works. Okay, so Sherry Brown wants to know, is there a way to stop the record hinting in my family tree of an ancestor that is an LDS leader? Um, her Apparently, her family member is Richard L. Evans. Well, she didn't say why she wants to stop it. Well, I, I can guess why. Probably because she gets a bazillion notifications. <laughs> nope. Oh. I suspect the reason is because her ancestor is locked in the tree. Uh -huh. There's a certain set of prominent ancestors and and uh, church leaders and stuff, presidents, some um, some of the presidents, and that are locked and are non-editable. And so when a hint comes, you get told about the hint, but you can't do anything with it. You can't okay. attach it or do anything to it. So uh, we just had a conversation today. I was resistant to stop hinting. And the reason why is because I want to fix it so that 
<coughs> there's an authorized person to be able to edit uh, that a locked person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably a designated family member. Probably a no. Probably initially it would be a family search employee. Mm -hmm. okay. Maybe someday uh, uh, an authorized person. And I wanted the hints to happen so that if a hint came, that person could do the attaching, or somebody could say to that, you know, put in the discussions, hey. There's a hint here where the person who's approving this person take care of this. Yeah. But that's, and I wanted that to be sooner and it isn't happening sooner. So we're taking a look at no longer hinting for people that are locked so that you don't get frustrated that you can't attach it. Makes sense. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, we have one more question. Okay. Um, Darlene Jacobs wants to know, is there any chance that we can have a latest change feature for temple ordinances for people who release ordinances and can't find them to reserve them again? Oh. So, <laughs> Don't uh, look at me. I just, I just read the questions. Yeah, I wasn't really looking at you. I was processing. No, you were, you were staring at me like this. I was processing because I was processing. You were giving me like the weird eyes. I was going, uh, okay. Okay, go. So what she asked was, uh, I believe, I put ordinances, I reserve ordinances, and they're on my list. Okay. I either unreserve or the two-year thing happens and unreserves for me. Mm -hmm. And now I want to find that person so I can put them back on my list. Okay. But I can't remember who it was. Makes sense. So why can't you give me a list that says... These are the ones that were on your list and they're no longer on your list. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's possible. It's possible. We don't track that. We don't track what was on your list. If it's off your list, we take it off your list. So the question is mm -hmm. what if and, and she just made the question she just made the question, right? So she can add and say, Is, is this, there a chance? Is that, that the reason? Is that the reason is because it got automatically released? So let us know right now know. on Facebook. So Darlene, are you wanting that because your record got automatically released? Let yeah. us know. Like respond to us really quick and we can answer. We can answer it. But let me tell you my plans. If it if it has to do with automatically released, then we are currently in the preliminary designs mm -hmm. of updating the system so that it will release on the two exactly two years from the date it was reserved and we're going to show you on your reservation list the date that it will be released and we're going to see if we can let you know and inform you that it's going to be released within 60 Excellent. days, it's going to be released within 30 days so, so that you in. can go in and unreserve and re-reserve it. So let me know if that, that, tell us if that would fix this problem so that we don't have to keep track of all the stuff you had on your list. Like a warning? Yeah, well it would be a notification. Hey, we're going to remove, these three reservations are going to be released at the end of the month. You know, you got 30 days and then we send you another one or maybe we do it two months out. We haven't figured out how often, but we do it two, a couple of times. This is going to be released in the next two weeks. And then you can go to your reservation list, sort by when it's going to be released, and it'll have the one that's going to get released next at the top. Okay. And then you can deal with it that way. So I think I think that would solve your problem if it's an automatic release. The problem is we're not telling you. And then time. we tell you and we say, hey, it's going to happen within the next you know, two weeks or days and you don't know when it's going to happen, and then <laughs> before you get there, boom, we've already released it, and then now you're mad at Searching us and yelling at the computer and, you know, spitting, dang, family search people and all that kind of stuff. They're probably just throwing darts at the computer. Yeah, so probably got, got a Facebook post of me hanging on the wall, chucking darts. <laughs> and then, it, then it gets released, and they're moving to <laughs> shotgun shells or whatever. Yep. Okay, so we have right. about 10 minutes. We have two more questions. Okay. Um, Debbie Petty wants to know, in the descendancy view, there are record hints and data problems. Is there a way for those to show up on my home page under recommended tasks? Currently, they only do home page only. That's a separate 
uh, it's a separate deal and so currently they're only doing like I said I think they just we used to be four up one down and I think they just put in a request uh, we're reviewing or we just approved I can't remember which that's like seven up and two or three down something like that so no it's not gonna go the descendancy view is like you know four generations from some way back ancestor right mm -hmm. you go way back to 1700s you pick one you say give me four generations and it's all down the the intent right now for the home page is to help people who are kind of just going right just going and uh, so most of them are just trying to get Something. six generations out not like 15 generate you know 10 generations out and then 20 down you know 10 down kind of thing so right now they only do that uh, I'm sure that that will continue to expand as desired there is uh, one concept that we're you know toying around with is we don't do a very good job of notifying people that they have hints available mm. right now we really don't tell you we go calculate hints and you have to kind of discover them you either go to your home page and you discover them or you wander your tree around looking for those hints so we've been talking about this for the last couple of weeks and it's like yeah, we don't like that. We want we want people to know to hey come back and we got hints you got on your people. Else. We got hints on your people, but at the same time we don't want to be annoying. There's some of these websites that get really annoying. Mm -hmm. I mean, I get an email from two or th I've got my tree a portion of my tree on two or three different sites, partner sites, and some of them email me a lot. Some of them email me every day. Some email <laughs> me you know, once a week. Some email me. So some some email me too much. And the thing that so it's we like a fine line. Where's that there's border? A, there's a fine line, and yeah. we don't want to offend or annoy because, you know, a, a, a lot of the it. other sites do that because they're wanting you to see the value of the money you paid and and, and let you know because you, you paid money to be those sites. We're free, but we also don't want to make you annoyed, so you don't want to come back because <laughs> we. I'm not gonna put it. Don't put anything over there, man, because they're like gonna send you an email every 20 minutes. <laughs> So, Every <clears throat> you know, <laughs> yeah. so we, uh, we're talking about it. I think that will help a lot. Uh, the, I, uh, you know, I'm thinking in my head when I'm thinking about it, we talked about it today again or yesterday again. Mm -hmm. And as I've listened to people, I've been tasked with riding the engine. And part of me feels like I think we ought to look at like what you're watching because those are the ones that are important for you. Uh, probably maybe the history. I don't know. Tell me where. Tell me which ones would be the most important to, to, to tell you when a hint comes. Is it the ones you're watching? Is it the ones you're got in your history list? Is it just the ones in your direct line up and down a certain distance? Uh, how often would you want these kind of emails? You know, it'd be nice to hear from you to tell me these kinds of things. You know, once a week is too offensive, or you know, maybe there's a way for you to graduate. You know. Hey, this is too much. And you just tell us, and now we slow down and, and make then we, you we, drop to like a lower We drop to once a week or once every two weeks Maybe. or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. We're still in the very preliminary discussion stage, so give me some ideas and help me help me figure out how you would like it to be. Okay. But I believe the problem we need to solve is we have hints for you, and, you, and we don't tell you that we have hints for you. True. Okay. okay. This is going to be the last question of the night, guys. If you still have questions, don't worry. I'm going to come back and catch them later, and we'll get to them next yeah, week. Yeah, just keep posting them. But we, yeah, we got to wrap up so that we can go find out if we're going to have a, a little boy or a little girl come into the family in yep. December. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is from Dana Hendrickson. She wants to know, last year England added a new civil registration birth index. She gave us the website. And it provides the mother's maiden name in addition to the other information available. Um on freebmd.org. Okay. Would it be possible to gather this information and use it for hinting? You could provide some awesome hints with maiden name information. And that's a, a, I'm not familiar with the website. Thank you very much. I'll take that information and go, and go visit with the partner team to see if that's something that's interesting. Uh, this has to be something that the people who own that, uh, the, record. the records want to do. 
So if you know, if you notice, we take we were like billion grades or something. We have on we hint those. Mm -hmm. They have to be willing to give us their extracted data, and allow us to put it on our site, and then hint it, and then send you to their site. <clears throat> so that always starts with a conversation. So thank you for sending that to me, sending me that stuff in my email, no, and then uh, I will take that to the to the team that I I work with that team. I meet with them once uh, every other week. So I'll take that to the team and say, hey, this is one area that they believe would, this is one that's been suggested by this group. And maybe I'll take a look and see if they'd be interested in sharing their indexes with us. So okay. I will do that. All right, okay. so let's wrap hey, up. So thank you very much. We should wish everybody a happy, happy 4th, 4th of July. July. Yeah, I know. Even though some of you aren't in America. <laughs> I was listening to Come to America, West Side, West, West West Side, Side Story. Story. But uh, so, uh, yeah, for those in the U.S., uh, happy 4th of July. I hope it's safe and that you have a fun time. Enjoy the fireworks. Certainly not going to be a whole lot of fireworks around our area because everything's burning down. So <laughs> I think there'll be pretty tight restrictions on where we can shoot fireworks. My guess is they're going to let the stadium of fire go because they always let them go. But I think it'll be very interesting. I think they, they the usually draw a line just uh, west of our house. Mm -hmm. They say no fireworks beyond this particular Point. street. Right. It'll be very, in, and we always listen and watch because lately that street's been getting closer and closer. To our house. But, yeah, to our <laughs> house, but it's it's still a good, you know, 10 block, 20 blocks away or something. Right now. So, right now, right now. so we'll see when so. that comes out. It should be out already on how what streets the, the, fi no, the, no, the fireworks. no fire zone. Yeah, no firework zone. So, so have, have a good a, have a good time. We'll yeah. see you next time. We're meeting again on July 6th at 7.30 Mountain Standard Time. The event is already in there, so... Feel free okay. to invite your friends and come along. And so, have a good evening. Have a good night, guys. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Fireworks.